Welcome everybody. It's a very rainy wet day in Vancouver so I'm sitting in my apartment dreaming about hiking so I thought I'd put together a quick list of some of my favorite hikes from last year. I did most of my hiking last year in British Columbia with a couple international additions but without further ado let's start with the first one. First on my list of favorite hikes from last year is the Black Tusk in Garibaldi Provincial Park. Garibaldi Provincial Park is pretty close to Squamish in British Columbia, Canada. So about 45 minutes or an hour outside of Vancouver. I did the Black Tusk as a day hike. It's about 27 kilometers round trip and is definitely a challenging hike. The Black Tusk is a pretty interesting geological feature. It's a volcanic plug and a very obvious landmark. You can see it from all of the surrounding areas. So this particular trail starts at Rubble Creek parking lot where you follow the marked path through a forest along a creek and past a waterfall. After a few kilometers, the trail starts to ascend pretty steeply and you hit some switchbacks that lead you up toward the Black Tusk. As you climb up and up, you're rewarded with stunning views of the surrounding mountains and glaciers. You get a really Really cool view of Garibaldi Lake as well. It's so blue. The final kilometer or two is the most challenging for sure. The actual or official summit of the Black Tusk is only accessible by actual rock climbing and equipment, whereas the false summit or the summit you're gonna get to when you're hiking, it would include a class three scramble with some hand over hand climbing through a chimney and then across an exposed ridge with some loose rock. So definitely not a beginner hike. If you do reach the top of Black Tusk, you are rewarded with stunning views. It's so gorgeous up there. The day that I was there was not the best weather by the time I got up to the top. It had clouded in and was quite windy, but I did wait around long enough for some of the clouds to clear up and got a pretty good sense of what the views would be like on a clear day. Number two on the list of favorite hikes from last year is the Kilatoa Loop in Ecuador. So these numbers are really in no particular order. So I started this hike from Sikchos in Ecuador and worked my way towards the Kilatoa Crater at the end. The whole hike is about 40 kilometers and takes somewhere between three and five days to complete. This was the first time I'd done any hiking in the Andes Mountains and boy, can I tell you, it is gorgeous out there and very unique. It was unlike anything I'd ever hiked before. The hike is at high altitude, so that's definitely something you wanna consider. I believe the Kilatoa Crater is somewhere around 12,000 feet. So as you hike this one, you pass through picturesque farmland, steep canyons, and you complete the journey at the Kilatoa Crater Lake, which is a pretty famous landmark. Most of the folks who hike this trail, including myself, stay at hostels along the way. Each of the small towns that you pass through will have accommodation. Doing the trail this way means you don't have to worry about carrying a shelter and you get to interact with some of the local population, try some good food, and sleep in a bed at night. Completing the Kilatoa Loop offers a really unique insight into the Andean highlands. I was personally one of maybe five hikers out there doing it at the time, and so most of the people I interacted with were local Ecuadorians, which was quite a cool experience. Even though my Spanish really needs some work. But as you can see here, the scenery was breathtaking. Number three on my list is another local BC hike. I also did this hike last fall, and it is the Elfin Lakes to the Gargoyles and Columnar Peak hike. This hike is also in Garibaldi Provincial Park, which is a beautiful place for day hikes and multi-day adventures. This hike is another roughly 27 or 28 kilometer out and back that winds through some seriously gorgeous alpine terrain. This one, you start from the Diamond Head parking lot. You follow the marked trail through the forest, passing streams, waterfalls, patches of berries. It's also a popular mountain biking route, so keep an eye out for those. So after about the first First 11 kilometers you'll reach Elfin Lakes which are two twin lakes surrounded by glaciers and mountains. This is a great spot to take a break maybe have some breakfast or lunch and depending on the weather you could take a dip in the lakes. This is also a really popular place to camp if you can get a reservation. After a quick break at the lakes I continued up the path towards the gargoyles. They're a unique rock formation that looks a bit like gargoyles hence the name. The trail up to the peak of gargoyles is pretty slippery there's a lot of loose rock and fine powder that's hard to hike down especially but the views from the top are really really beautiful and totally worth it if you're feeling brave you can even make your way across the backbone out to the final peak that's quite a cool traverse from there I made my way down from the gargoyles to the saddle and on the other side of the saddle is columnar peak this is a great summer and early fall hike the number four on my list of hikes from last year is the Juan de Fuca this trail is on Vancouver Island so I did take a ferry from Vancouver to do this one this one stretches 47 kilometers across the west coast of Vancouver Island. This one might be one of my favorite backpacking trips I've ever done. It's a challenging but seriously unforgettable journey through rugged coastline, old growth forests, along beautiful beaches. I would call this kind of the little sister of the more well-known west coast trail. Similar terrain and scenery, 
but without the scramble to get permits. This hike you can go north or south. I actually went south, so I started from Botanical Beach and worked my way down toward China Beach. On this hike, you'll find hidden waterfalls, rocky coastlines, you can camp on the beach and watch the beautiful sunsets, and you might even catch a glimpse of a whale or an otter or some seals if you're lucky. I did this one solo again in the fall and loved how peaceful it was. There was hardly anybody out there. Coming in at number five, so last but absolutely not least, is a hike in Colorado. It's one of the 14ers called Mount Snuffles. Being a 14er, it means that Mount Snuffles is above 14,000 feet. So this is a pretty serious undertaking for a day hike. I would say this hike offers some of the best views I've ever seen. This trail was a definite challenge, not just the hiking itself, but add in the elevation and a bit of a run in with some weather and it made for a pretty challenging day. The last, I would say fairly significant stretch of this hike is a scramble over big rocks and boulders. So definitely be prepared for that. You'll probably want to go with somebody who knows the area so they can get you to the actual peak of Mount Snuffles. I don't know if I would have been able to find it without going with a local friend. We camped at the Blue Lakes Trailhead and started very early before the sun rose so that we could do the 13 mile round trip before the storms rolled in in the afternoon. We made it just shy of the official peak of Mount Snuffles because the dark clouds started to roll in and we were a little worried we were gonna run into a thunderstorm. So we waved to the top and then made our way back down before we got hit by lightning. It's one of those cases when you're in the backcountry where being safe takes precedence over getting to the peak of something. But seriously, check out those views. It, breathtaking, breathtaking. As always with any hike, make sure you leave no trace, pack out what you packed in, and be responsible in the outdoors. And that's it. Those are my top five hikes from last year. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. On top of that, I've just launched a brand new Patreon. You can check out the link below. I would love it, love it, love it if you would want to support this channel even just a little bit. Thanks so much for watching and subscribe below.